Today, let's talk about an exciting new space startup company, Starcatcher. Their business plan is to set up an energy grid in space to provide power to other satellites. That's a unique business plan for sure. So without any further introduction, let's dive into the startup and their exciting plans. Starcatcher Industries, founded in 2024 by successful space entrepreneurs Andrew Rush and Michael Schneider, an experienced venture capital operator Brian Landenvert to eliminate power constraints on satellites and other spacecraft by constructing the Star Catcher Network. More about that later. Advantages of a power grid in space. Lower mission cost. Building satellites can be expensive. Adding additional solar panels for redundancy can be bulky and time consuming, increasing the launch costs and time to build the satellites. Another advantage is buy extra power when you need it. Paying for power in orbit adds flexibility. Starcatcher is estimating savings of over 40% of the operational life of a satellite with reduced operational outlay. More capabilities for satellites. Certain operations or sensors cannot be used on satellites because of limited power. For instance, sophisticated data processing and the use of AI on board satellite or power-hungry sensors cannot be used or must be used sparingly. Introducing the Starcatcher network. This network will be the world's first space-based energy grid it will use Starcatcher's proprietary power beaming technology to beam power to other satellites in orbit as a service. Customers can use their existing solar panels to receive more power or more consistent power and higher concentrations of power than they would receive without the power boost. No retrofit required. It works on all existing satellites in orbit. This can be considered a PaaS or power as a service, similar to SaaS, which means software as a service. A pay-as-you-go service with Starcatcher owning the power satellites, making them responsible for the upkeep, maintenance, upgrade and operations of the power satellites. Customers just pay for the power boost whenever they need it. Starcatcher can send from 100 watts up to 100 kilowatts of power at flux concentrations of 0.1 suns to 10 suns to eliminate energy bottlenecks for more uptime and more bandwidth. For instance, SAR or Synthetic Aperture Radar Sensors are used to generate high resolution images of Earth. A SAR satellite typically requires a power consumption in the range of several kilowatts. This is because SAR is an active sensor that emits and receives radar signals, making it an energy intensive sensor. For example, the Sentinel-1 SAR satellite operated by ESA needs 6 kilowatts of power to achieve a 5 meter resolution image. The typical solar panel for a satellite generates around 250 to 400 watts of energy. And don't forget, power from solar panels is needed for many housekeeping operations and can't be used exclusively by sensors. As you can see, powerful sensors like SAR require large amounts of power, which drives up the cost, build time and operational complexity of satellites. As customers always want higher quality images and greater resolution, the only way to achieve that is with more energy hungry sensors. How does the Starcatcher network work? Let's briefly explain the operation of the Starcatcher network. First, you have to collect energy from the sun. A Starcatcher power node will be able to collect 150 kilowatts of transmission capacity in total. That can be divided amongst multiple clients. These power node satellites will orbit at 900 miles or 1500 kilometers in altitude. Next is tracking. Client satellites will not require any transceiver or beacon to receive power from the Starcatcher network. Instead, clients will simply provide the necessary orbit information and the power node network will identify and track client satellites to provide them with power. And finally, transmission. Starcatcher will transmit broad spectrum energy compatible with state-of-the-art triple junction solar cells to client satellite solar arrays. The amount of energy, concentration and duration is specified in the contract with Starcatcher. A single power node satellite is designed to serve multiple client satellites at the same time. The network will be sized to serve thousands of satellites. Who will benefit the most from this type of service? Satellites that are nearing the end of life. Perhaps their solar panels have degraded and don't produce as much power as before. Rather than ending the life of satellite, more power can be beamed to solar panels to keep the satellite functioning. Satellites requiring more power for data processing, stronger signal transmission, or producing high quality images could also benefit. By increasing the power to their sensors, these satellites can return higher quality results without requiring any modification. How about satellites that need to change orbit frequently? Satellites that frequently change orbits, especially in areas with high orbital debris risk, 
could benefit from a power beaming contract. This would allow them to operate for longer periods in these challenging environments. Finally, satellites could increase their uptime and data generation by operating at full power 24 seven with a contract from the Starcatcher network. This would allow them to generate more revenue by maximizing their operational capabilities. Let's talk about milestones next. This section is going to be very short because the company is brand new, but we do have one milestone so far. In July 2024, Starcatch closes a 12.25 million seed round. This positions the company to build the world's first space-based energy grid. The network will deliver energy on demand and at higher concentrations of energy than the sun to the existing solar arrays of client spacecraft, enabling them to generate up to five to 10 times the amount of power they would generate otherwise without retrofit. Starcatcher anticipates a need for 840 megawatts of power generation by 2030. Andrew Rush, co-founder, president, and CEO of Starcatcher said, power infrastructure is the foundational building block of civilization and industry. Our goal is to expand that foundation into low earth orbit and beyond with our in-space power grid and service. Being able to buy power for your spacecraft whenever and wherever you need it in LEO will expand opportunity and accelerate humanity, realizing the potential of the second golden age of space. Starcatch has early traction, securing more than half a dozen letters of intent from commercial space companies, spanning the remote sensing, national security, human habitat, and telecommunication verticals. Howard Morgan, an investor said, as a longtime space sector investor, I view the network Starcatch is developing as one of the most potentially transformational technologies in the dynamic and continuously evolving space technology sector. Satellite launch costs continue to fall and power needs are accelerating with onboard processing. At the same time, energy demand is vastly outstripping the supply that current solar panels and batteries provide. Starcatcher's founders are drawing from their extensive industrial experience to tackle this opportunity with a unique approach. Okay, let's talk about upcoming plans. With initial funding secured, Starcatcher will focus on validating and demonstrating its power beaming services for customers. First, they will work on ground demonstrations of the technology, followed in late 2025 by an on-orbit demonstration. We can't wait to see the launch and operation of the first energy grid in space. We'll keep you informed about this brand new space startup company and their plans. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to see more videos like this on other small startup companies in space. We cover space startups in every area of the space business, such as launch providers, commercial space stations, space tugs, orbital debris removal, and more. See you soon.